These are works by an artist whose name is Ruwal. He was associated with the Fauves in that he knew them, he understood the use of color, but he himself does not count as a Fauve. And the reason for that is Ruwal's images carry a social message. Uh, they are created specifically with the hope of change, of improving things. Uh, Ruwal was a, also a very religious artist, so his images often are associated with Christian messages in particular. So they tend to, be, in a way, to be sacred as opposed to being secular. I've included him here for a couple of reasons. One is I thought it might be just a nice time to say something more about color, which is so important for both the Fauves and also for the German Expressionists, who are going to borrow some of the ideas of the Fauves, uh, in addition to folks like Munch and Van Gogh. Uh, color is very powerful as a tool for painters. It can be broken roughly into two categories, warm colors and cool colors. The cool colors uh, include colors like blues and greens. These tend to be very soothing, relaxing, and calming colors. They also impact us optically by seeming to move away from us into the distance. In contrast, the warm colors, and that would be reds and oranges and yellows and everything associated with them, these are colors that stimulate the emotions. They ratchet up whatever the emotional content of a painting is. They also do something quite interesting visually, and that is they seem to come forward towards us. So, if you take a look at the image of Ruel's old king on our right, which is his most famous painting, you can see the red on the costume of the old king literally coming forward towards the viewer, whereas the background seems to go into the distance. And visually, it makes it look like the king is set into space. Ruel's old king seems to glow. It seems as if light is actually coming out of the picture. And we think that is partly due to the fact that he was influenced by stained glass, um, which is colored glass with heavy dark lines like we're looking at right here. And as we see these heavy dark lines, I think we can get a little bit of a sense of this image being created in pieces that is almost glowing. Uh, so what are we looking at? We're looking at an Old Testament figure, probably an Old Testament king, who seems to be solid, monumental, grand, but rather dark and brooding, as if he's troubled by the way things are going and the life around him. But if you take a look, and this would be Ruel's perspective, if you take a look at the flower that he's holding, right over, whoops, right over here, um, you're going to be able to see a glimmer of hope because that image of a flower, and the form of the flower is really just a suggested one, but it is white. Okay, the image of a flower is a symbol representing hope. Hope for us, hope for ideas of rebirth, renewal, redemption. And for Ruwal in particular, that was an idea that we as a society could improve ourselves and be essentially reinvigorated, improved, and reborn again to seek redemption. His pathway was often a religious one, which is not typical at all in 20th century painting. But for Ruwal, it was the path forward. Uh, just looking quickly at the image on the left, this is the uh, image of Jesus, one of many that Ruel did, and it shows him uh, battered and beaten. Uh, Jesus being willing to suffer to redeem humanity. This is an incredibly expressive image, and if Ruel were in fact German, I would be speaking about him as one of the German Expressionists. Being French, however, uh, it is a little bit difficult to categorize him, so we tend to put him with the foes, at least on the surface of things, because of his intense and important use of color.